So uh, exactly yeah. 10 years ago, I got to uh, interview this wonderful, phenomenal artist on campus radio. We had a bit of a call in. He was somewhere down in Cape Town. Uh, brand new single titled Down South. Hit a full circle 360. And 10 years later, I find myself at 947 doing Top 40. And guess who I'm chatting to once again? None other than Jeremy Loops. Good afternoon and welcome to Let's the show. Let's go, baby. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, appreciate it. Nice to be here. Always nice to have a full circle moment like that. And congratulations on joining the team over there. Thank you so much. Uh, look, it's been it's been a phenomenal 10 years for you. You've been hard at work. We've seen you at Joe Big Day. We've seen you around the world. Uh, I know that there's new music. We're going to chat about what you've got uh, on the way. How has all of this traveling influenced the sound of Jeremy Loops? And how has, have you always maintained uh, so consistent with, with music? Yeah, thanks. I mean, good question. The, you know, I would say on this album that I've just finished recording, more than anything I've done since my first album, it was really a process of coming home uh, musically to myself. And there's even a song on the record sneak peek with uh, lady smith black mombazo who uh which is coming home and it's just been a, a really strange time and i think it's largely because i recorded it all from from cape town from home a lot of my second and third album were kind of written and recorded around the world as i moved so much and it was cool, but it was a lot. It was a lot to cope with, um, performing as much as that, being on the road, living in and out of your, you know, bags and hotels and tour buses. And it's exhausting. And um, on this record, I just felt like I deserve to do it in a bit more of a, yeah, relaxed environment. So right now I'm in Corsica here on my summer holiday, which I actually gave myself as a bit of a, a, a treat and a carrot at the a light at the end of the tunnel for finishing my album because the last six months I've been locked in my studio in Cape Town uh, in the you know it got real cold over the last couple of months I'm not sure if you've been aware but yeah we've been freezing in Cape Town lots of rain sitting in that studio with the heater on with the with the fire blazing just going through these songs and trying to write the kind of most natural and yeah the stuff that to me uh, East. And it was a, it was such a well-deserved treat, I think, because I haven't been touring a lot. You know, a lot of people will have probably seen that I haven't been touring internationally for the last uh, two years. So I took a year, I uh, took a couple of years off touring internationally. I took those two years to write this album from my home studio almost entirely. And, uh, and now I'm here on holiday in Corsica in the summertime, and I'm just doing the mixing stage, which means I'm walking around the beaches with my headphones on, just listening to all the mixes, tweaking them, getting them just right, and starting to release some of this new music. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been a process, and I think being able to be a little bit more home-based for recording this album has done a lot for taking me back to my original roots and my sound. You know, I think a lot of people listening to this album in its entirety when it finally comes will recognize quite a lot of my first album energy yeah. in it. And I think it's just what happens when I slow down and I and I write from from a place uh, like like I wrote my first album. I just wrote that before I was anyone. I was in my spaces and I slowly wrote that album. And um, yeah, that, that's what I've done for this one. Yeah, because, I mean, you're an artist who, uh, I mean, I've, I've followed your career over the past 10 years, and and you're you're consistently you, if that makes sense. There, there isn't a trend that Jeremy follows. There's a trend that Jeremy sets, and, and, and that's almost like the sound that we, that we vibe to because we know you've got this uniqueness to yourself. And uh, seeing you perform last year was absolutely phenomenal uh, because I know the rest of the world loves seeing you performing as well. And uh, I know you've taken a bit of a break, but what was the reception like um, and the nerves as well, uh, being as unique as you are, um, headlining some of the big festivals? Oh, it's always stressful. It never, uh, <laughs> it doesn't get any easier either. I think like in the beginning of my career, I remember saying to, you know, some of my friends at the time, like the anxiety and the nerves you feel bet before going on to these big stages, like a nine for seven, you know, Joburg day, like there's, 
there's nothing really that can prepare you for stepping out in front of that many people. You feel so um, naked and alone with your music and your craft. And um, I think probably that's not true for all artists. I'm sure some of those artists grow up singing in their bedroom in the mirror and just waiting for that moment where they can be in the limelight. Th that wasn't me at all. Like I, I was on a different path and somehow music found me in a way. And um, I was searching for something, but I certainly wasn't searching for fame and fortune. I just really wanted to make music. And somehow all those good things have kind of followed that journey. And I've had to adapt to the feeling of total sheer panic and fear that comes with stepping out onto big stages and learning to harness that those emotions and face them and just look into the eye of the storm uh, is definitely like part of it. So I can't say that anything's changed. I uh, the, the bigger you get in your career or the more well-known you get, the bigger festivals you start to play and you start to move up from being on the lineup to maybe headlining them yourself. And with that comes an added responsibility to deliver the show that people want and the energy that people are expecting. So, yeah, I felt like as I've adapted to the new levels of fear that come with getting out there in front of a big crowd, just when you think you are ready to travel at this space, then some new opportunity comes and it's like, oh, you know, tomorrow you're going to be in studio writing a song with Ed Sheeran. Good luck with that. And I remember like that, that was a whole nother level when I was in studio with Lady Smith Black Mombazo for the first time, I was so intimidated. I was like, yeah. how am I supposed to show up creatively for a moment like this? Um, when I've idolized Lady Smith since I was just a little boy and I've, you know, been listening to their music from way back. So you're always being stretched in the music world. And it's, I suppose, part of what you end yeah. up loving about it as well. I, I think there's also a moment of, uh, you know, realization that you, you're sitting in a, in a room with a group that you've admired, uh, you know, from, from a very young age, they're Grammy Award winners. And it's almost feels surreal that you've come together and they're like, hey, let's, let's make music together. I mean, that's, that's just absolutely beautiful. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a mix of emotions. And there's definitely, I, I remember feeling like if I had ever done something that cemented my legacy in my own mind, yeah. that that first time I was in studio with Lady Smith, I was like, this is it. I, I made it. I made it full circle <laughs> back to the music that got me so inspired and, you know, growing up having those Paul Simon and Lady Smith records playing in my household. And then to end up like collaborating with them and not only collaborating with them, this, you know, here's a little sneak peek for your audience. I've, I've written another song with them for this new album. Ooh. And so we are working together again. And I would say we have continued to actually improve on what we've, we've been doing together. And it just feels, yeah, it felt so natural getting back together with them in studio um, a few months ago. And I can't wait for people to hear what is on this album because um, yeah, growing, growing into those things and yeah, like learning to actually collaborate with them and not come from that place of just being in awe of them like I was the first time, I suppose. So uh, speaking of the new album, there's a new single that has just come out, Go Again. Uh, the, I, one thing I always appreciate about artists like you is that you make feel-good music and almost motivational music to, to up, up, uplift people. And this, is, this yeah. is no exception to the rule. This is another one that, that will definitely make us smile. Yeah. You know, I think if people describe my music, they would say in general, it's come from that place. And I think there's a like a pretty serious misconception out there. And I saw this um, spoken about by the late uh, Robert Williams, a comedian who somewhere online I saw he wrote something that where he said, uh, you know, that often people with the greatest sadness are the ones who spend their lives trying to cheer people up. And he was obviously speaking about his own journey as a comedian and struggling with depression. And what it resonated with with me was I looked a little bit more closely at like how I've spent my entire career trying to create things that can bring hope. And I think a lot of people might look at my music and say, well, Jeremy's clearly just a very hopeful guy and uh, always very happy. And I think it's really actually been the opposite. It's like, I look around me at what goes on in South Africa. I look at the pain and the suffering and what people are exposed to on a day to day. I feel such deep gratitude for the things that I've been blessed with and all the shoulders I've been able to stand on to get where I'm going. 
And I have this deep sense of like wanting to just help people get there themselves, you know, and I had to go through fire to kind of build what I've built. It, it's been a long, arduous road. And so I'm always, I think, just internally motivated to try and find that silver lining in my own life so that I can try and share with other people, like how you might be able to find that silver lining in your own life. And the world has felt so chaotic and confusing and certainly not hopeful for me in these last few years, COVID, just feeling yeah. really upside down. So Go Again speaks to my process of finding hope again, learning to love again, learning to get out there and just be fearless in the face of such chaos. Yeah. And um, I hope that it gives that sanctity for, um, you know, act as a, a musical sanctuary for anyone who needs it. Do you, do you think it's a, it's a South African thing? Because we we often get told about South Africans are very resilient. We, uh, you know, we we face all of these challenges, but somehow we manage to always come out positive. Whether it's load shedding, uh, whether it's the unemployment rate, we just always have this positive outlook of, okay, things are bad, but let's let's try to be positive. Do you think it's a, it's a South African approach to this? Yeah, spot on. I think it's, it's a huge part of it. Um, it's something that I, you know, I, I work and collaborate so closely with so many people internationally. And I, you always sense that, that there's just some, we're just built a little different in South Africa and we're exposed to, a, you know, we all have to live and understand the, the difficulty. It's like, so that no matter who you are in South Africa, you've got a different, you cut your teeth differently. And certainly as bands, uh, to try and make it internationally, which, you know, to some extent, I would say me and my team have done well to get out there and build an international brand and international touring music band. And uh, we've had to we've had to dig really deep to make that happen in, in ways that I think, you know, if you're an Australian band with exceptional funding from the Australian government and all these platforms, you know, we would go and play these showcases when we were coming up um, and you'd go to L.A. and play this music showcase case and you were just it was so difficult to swallow you would see the the french bands as well like in the, in the australian bands rock up with all these these beautiful venues sponsored by the australian musical consulate and this and that and we were literally like having to borrow money from any extended family members who would help us pay our way there because we just can hardly make enough money in south africa to like pay our own airfares so Anyone in sports or anything trying to travel, like we know, it's like you have to dig so deep to to get out there and and build a reputation and fly the flag for SA. And somewhere along the way, you have to realize, like you have to be doing it for the purpose. You know, you can't, yeah. you're not doing it for the fame and glory and the money because that stuff is far away when you start. And um, so I think that adds like a grit, like you're saying. And it also adds a, a humbleness, like you yeah. have to be in for the right reasons because there's no faking it till you make it. Actually, you, you've you kind of got to plant, plant a flag in the sand and be like, this is what I stand for. And come hell or high water, I'm going to get there. And and uh, yeah, it definitely. It, yeah, yeah we, I think we're quite different, like you're saying. So uh, after your holiday, uh, you're not going to be heading down to Cape Town because of the weather. I know you've got a couple of gigs lined up. Uh, where can we catch you? I see you're going to be moving more inland where it's warmer. So that's a good choice. Yeah, we've got a bunch of shows. I, I think we are. I see we're playing in Pretoria at the Barnyard uh, in Mainland. We're playing a festival up in Hoodspray called the Spirit of Kruger. So we're going to be up like Lion King up in there with the band's time going that far north. Uh, we're playing in Porch Snowflake. We're playing Patstel. I I don't even know all the places. I'm just listing <laughs> off names that I see here on my diary that I've been given. But uh, I I said to my team when we're back and this album is done, I want to start getting out there and playing some shows. So we've we've got a bunch of shows up your side of the world coming up in September, and um, and then towards the end of the year we'll start putting things together as the full album starts to be prepared. But yeah, for now. You've got new music. There's shows coming up. I'll definitely be playing and uh, previewing a couple of these new songs of the album, including Go Again at those shows. So, yeah, if you're in any of those places, if you're in, if you're in Pretoria, if you're in Jersey, if you're in Hoodsprayt, check it out. It was up your side. That'd be great. Perfect. Listen, we anticipated new music. We love it. And definitely first time play here on the 947 Top 40 powered by Hyundai Go Again. 
It's Jeremy Loops. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us. Hey, easy, dude. Thanks so much for me. And to all the listeners out there, 947, thank you for the years of support and the blessing that you've allowed me to just keep doing what I do. I love making music for you all. Uh, enjoy it. Go again. And I hope the song lives on with you for many years to come. You! The 947 Top, Top 40. 40. With Nick Explicit.